January 1937, off the South Pole. The submarine HMS Victoria has picked up two mysterious crates as well as a young Norwegian explorer, Bjorn Hamsun. Unfortunately, the commando unit carrying out the Polaris operation was unable to save Bjorn's father, Peter. He would always remain a prisoner of an ultra-secret base. Operation Polaris completed. Two crates on board. Bjorn Hansen recovered. Mental state critical. Lieutenant O'Leary reported missing, returning to base. Are the two crates still covered with ice? Affirmative. Do not expose them to heat under any circumstances. Keep an eye on Hansen. He knows more. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Out. Lieutenant Ryan, given Lieutenant O'Leary's demise, you are now second in command aboard the Victoria. Talk to the captain, I'm the pilot. Do you think Hampson will pull through? We shall do our utmost to ensure that the scientific community does not lose its most brilliant anthropologist. Are the two crates safe, Captain? Your Secret Service superiors in Washington will be pleased to know that they are now in the hands of the Royal Navy, Lieutenant Ryan. That Hampson's got nerve. I wonder how on earth he managed to send us an SOS while in the hands of the Nazis. Without that chap, Operation Polaris would never have got off the ground. Vessel on the surface, Captain! Seven degree tilt, climb to within 20 feet. They tracked us, dive! Aye aye, Captain. State of red alert. Damage report, Driscoll. They've hit our stern, Captain. To the hole, Lieutenant. Follow me. Jones! The crates. Something inside them. Something. He's dead, Captain. They're going to melt the ice covering the crates! Jones, you're dead. There's something alive in the crates. I'm assuming command of the Victoria. Aye, aye, Admiral. We'll get out of it. What are your orders? We've got to tame this beast. The enemy vessel has disappeared from the radar. That's one less worry anyway. What do we do about the creature? Are there any weapons on board the Victoria? No, I... The Victoria is not equipped for offensive operations. Where's Hampson? Maybe he knows something. They put him in a bunk to sleep, but he's still delirious. Is someone keeping an eye on Hampson? Yes, Wayne is with him. Lloyd knew more than we did. Did he mention the notes on Operation Polaris? I don't think so. He got his orders directly by radio from Edwards Base.
Stanley, what do you know about Hemp? We've been hit! Oh, my engines! My engines! Stanley! We've been hit! Oh, my engines! My engines! Samson fit enough to talk, Wayne? No, he hasn't stopped raving since we picked him up, Lieutenant. What's the update on the Red Alert? Alert maintained. But we're not dealing with an ordinary enemy anymore. Captain Lloyd is dead. Hell. I'm going up to the bridge. Hold on, we have to get Hampson to talk. You can join Driscoll up on the bridge. Aye, aye, Lieutenant. God. Uh, oh, Elska. Let's go. Let's go. to play nurse with me. <coughs> anyway, you, you don't even look the part. Ah! Have they come back, or did we hit a reef? I've got nothing on radar, Admiral. That came from within the Victoria. Any damage? Flooding in the torpedo room. We need to send an SOS and to pump out that water. Come face to face with this creature. How do we maintain contact? Take this walkie-talkie. How can we send an SOS? Only the captain knew the transmission code and the frequency. But maybe Stanley knows. I'm going down to the engine room. How can we pump out the torpedo room? We can't do it from here. We need to get inside the torpedo room.
What happened? This beam collapsed with the impact. Help me! What can I do to free you? Use the weight! Hurry, please! Stanley's trapped under a girder. We've got to free him. Go back down to the engine. Then get on your walkie-talkie from there. I'll operate the winch from up here. Help! Okay, bring in the winch. Now lower the chain! Okay, the chain's hooked to the beam! Move it! Oh, thanks. Thanks, Lieutenant. My engines! Oh, my engines! Okay, I need to send an SOS. Driscoll says you can help me. My poor engines! My engines! Stanley! Captain Lloyd is dead! I'm a god. Give me the radio frequency. 107461. Get us out of here quickly, Lieutenant. Mayday! Mayday! HMS Victoria in trouble! 58 West, 48 South! We're taking on water! At the rate we're taking on water, we'll never be able to surface. No Allied vessel will be able to locate us. We need to send something up to the surface. Frisco, I'm going into tube number 26. Stand by for firing in 10 seconds. Hold on tight, Admiral. This will blow your skirt up. Admiral, there's a vessel on the surface. With a bit of luck, you won't have to swim for too long. All right, Admiral, let's go! I take my hat off to him. He's got guts, that little lieutenant. Stress flare! Sound the alarm! We found them! The Falkland Islands, Edwards Base, 13th of January, 1937. As far as you're concerned, Ryan, Operation Polaris is over. But while you await your repatriation to Washington, you'll continue to hold the rank of Lieutenant in the Royal Navy. What happened to Ham's son? We found him exhausted inside a metal locker on board the Victoria. He's been taken to the medical wing on the base. Is the last Polaris crate safely stowed, Captain Sears? I've placed it under close watch. Nothing can happen to it. Enter! At ease. Captain, I've put the film uh, Miss Molly sent outside in the corridor. Thank you. You have a projection room here on the base? 
Yes, but the projectionist has been confined to barracks by Quartermaster Quincy. Who is this Miss Molly, Captain? The code name for one of our spies operating in Germany. I must leave you, Lieutenant. I have matters to deal with. Wait in my office for Quincy. He'll give you your duty roster. Quartermaster Quincy? Oh, here's your duty roster. Lieutenant, you have nothing more to do here. I've already wasted enough time drawing up your duty roster. Some effects belonging to Hampson have disappeared. I need to find them. Lieutenant? Your duty roster, Lieutenant? Here it is. I'm Lieutenant Ryan. No messages for me? I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I don't have time to talk to you. Are you the projectionist for the base? I lie, but I've been confined to barracks for a little cigarette traffic and I had going. Quincy has had you confined at Captain Sears' orders? No, lad. The captain's not the type to confine a man because of three cigarettes. He's a good chap, the captain. I haven't been sent by Quincy. I get the impression he's not very keen on me either. <laughs> That's more like it. He's on another line in red to my fail, you know. Are there personnel files at the base? You'll have to ask Shaw about that. He knows everything. Here. <laughs> I know now it's not one of Quincy's tricks. But I accept only if I can be of service to you. Could you screen this film for me? Did you enjoy the film? Very edifying, uh, uh, What kind of film is it? Technical, McLaughlin. Very technical.
Uh, McLaughlin? Yes, lad? You shouldn't smoke so much. Bad for your health. Lieutenant Ryan, Hampson has disappeared. I discovered a strange green slime at the foot of his bunk. Have you noticed anything similar on board the Victoria? No, not that I can remember. Hmm, that's strange. I'm Lieutenant Ryan. No messages for me? I've just deciphered one for you. Hey, your friends in Washington are all paranoid. An intercepted coded message originating from Edwards base, destined for Germany. A traitor is operating from within the base. Look up the personnel files, and keep an eye on Hamson. Uh, do you know where I can find the personnel files? Ask McLaglan. I spoke to him. He said you could help me. All right, Lieutenant. The files are next to the armory. Pass, Lieutenant. Here you are. Lieutenant? I must have eaten something that was off. Where's the sick bay? Behind you, Lieutenant. I've been ordered to help Quartermaster Quincy find Hamson's belongings. Good luck, Lieutenant. That closet's a real junkie. Time to change the guard. <laughs> You'll see for yourself. They've replaced Finlayson's cigarette paper with toilet paper. Finlayson coughed all day because of the smoke. A real steam engine. Hello, Lieutenant. What can I do for you? 
Oh, in my five years in the army, I've never come across such an irritating character. He's only just arrived here and already he's managed to... Oh, it's horrible. I've got to see the doctor. It's very urgent. Please wait here for a moment. I'll go find out if we can see you. Lieutenant, the doctor will see you now. You may go in. So, what's your problem? Phlebitis? Diphtheria? A bout of malaria? Show me what you've eaten. You really ate that? Don't move. I'll get the medicine you need. Take this tablet. Don't hesitate to come back if you don't feel any better. What is it? Well, at last someone who appreciates the finer things in life. Come in, Lieutenant, come in! Yes, Lieutenant? I need to consult the personnel files. I don't think so, Lieutenant. Only Captain Sears and Quartermaster Quincy had access to these files. Quincy? He came and consulted the file just a while back. Captain Sears? <laughs> He's handier with the saber than he is with the pistol. The bin's burning! Oh, where's the extinguisher? Marsh! Marsh! What? Fire alarm! Evacuate! It, it, it's going to blow! Congratulations, Ryan. You're always in the right place at the right time. Come with me to my office. I have things to tell you. The lost Polaris crate has been found in pieces, and the body of one of my men has been found in the closet. You will not leave this office until I have found out what happened on board the Victoria. There is a creature roaming about the base. How did you get rid of the one on the Victoria? With an incantation. An incantation? Under hypnosis, Hampson screamed out an incantation that was capable of destroying the creature. What was the phrase? I had recorded it, but I lost the recording when I ejected it from Victoria. The Navy does not believe in incantations. Go back on board the Victoria. It's docked at the base harbor. See if you can lay your hands on some of Hampson's belongings. I am sure the answer is to be found on board the submarine.
off, Lieutenant. What's up? The, the radio operator's dead, the radio room is being sabotaged, all communications have been cut, and Captain Sears has disappeared. The Victoria has just exploded! Let the Lieutenant pass. My office, Lieutenant, on the double. I took a sample of Hampson's blood. Take a look. So, what? There's something that isn't human in his cells. When they brought me Hampson, he was holding a strange little book. Here. A prisoner of ice cannot cross a door unless a line has been drawn across its threshold with the blood of someone possessed. A stone allows you to send the prisoners of ice back into the void. This stone is called the Nar Stone. I don't know what's happened to Sears, but the encoded documents you found behind the map come from the Schloss Adler Nazi base. Sears was a traitor! Quincy had discovered that before we did. I realized that when I picked up the personnel files Quincy had stolen. He'd been investigating for a long time. I'm going to go and have Sears' documents decoded. Good luck, Ryan. I suppose we won't be seeing you again. However, you have done honor to the British uniform. Congratulations, Ryan. The coded documents enabled us to rediscover the trail of a certain John Parker. This man is an expert in magic rites and an old friend of Hamsun's. In a letter addressed to Bjorn Hamsun, Parker mentions a book from the library at Buenos Aires, reference OTR 2832. Find Parker or the book. Buenos Aires, 16th of January, 1937.
Excuse me? No comprendo, senor. Excuse me, where can I find the curator of the library? I also have an appointment with him. My father used to work here, but he's disappeared. And an exhibit from the collection has been stolen. I'm really worried. My name is Brian. Diane. Diane Parker. Professor Parker's daughter? That's right. I'm here to find your father, Diane. Has something happened to him? I hope not, but I may need your help. You can rely on me, Ryan. Can I help you, senor? Why is this pedestal empty? A stone disc of great value was exhibited on top of it, but uh, unfortunately it was stolen from us yesterday. I'd like to look up a work filed with you under reference OTR 2832. Un momento, senor. Your name, please? Ryan. Ryan? R-Y-A-N. Senor Jorge, someone would like to look at the work filed under reference OTR 2832. See, a Mr. Ryan. R-Y-A-N. Senorita Parker is also here. Very well, I will send them in. Well, the curator of the library is studying a number of chapters from the book you are interested in. He invites you to join him in his office. The receptionist just told me that the curator is waiting to see us. Good, I'll follow you. Mr. Ryan, come in. Diane? Hello, Jorge. Do you have any news of my father? Unfortunately not, but plainclothes policemen have been watching the library all morning. Why do you wish to look up reference OTR 2832? OTR 2832 is a password, right? Right. I am prepared to answer all your questions, Mr. Ryan. What is OTR 2832 all about? Well, it is a very ancient work. Unfortunately, there is only one copy left in the world. The one Miguel is holding. What had Professor Parker been working on recently? He had been focusing all his efforts on studying the solar disk that was stolen from us yesterday. The police suspect him of having committed the theft, but personally I strongly doubt it. I have known Mr. Parker for a long time. The disk was at his disposal. I rather think he has hidden it somewhere, for a reason I do not yet know. Miguel, resume your reading. Maybe it will enlighten Mr. Ryan. A long time ago, under the reign of Zieglichli, the Armadas lived in peace at Tewanaco. Until the day the fair-haired man appeared, he wore a metal mask and controlled the fire of the gods the solar disk. He overthrew the king of the Aymaras and became the god of gods near La Totepec, the rampant chaos. With the power of the solar disk, near La Totepec taught the Aymaras to go back through time. Back to the reign of the great old ones, well before the birth of man. The power of the Great Old Ones was matched only by their cruelty. As their slaves revolted, the Great Old Ones were outraged beyond all measure and entrapped the slaves as prisoners within the eternal ice of the South Pole. Nirla Totepec told the Aymaras that he who freed the prisoners of ice would become possessed by the spirit of their masters and be able to recall the Great Old Ones to Earth beyond the boundaries of time. However, they would have to await a favorable astral conjunction and utter the accursed incantation on a magical site. Thus, what had previously been would return yet again.
Give me the solid Schnell! Unfortunately, dear sir, it was stolen from us yesterday. Adapt! No funny business. The disc. Senor, this office is not open to the public. There is the solar disc. I am not in the mood for jokes here, Doctor. As you can see. I see nothing, dear sir. I am blind. There are strange eons where even death may die. What's going on here? What? The police will soon be here, Mr. Ryan. They mustn't find you here. Take this page from OTR 2832. It will be useful to you. Hide here, both of you! Something. Hurry! Perforated his liver. No, the bullet went through the heart. The heart is on the left, see? Whatever, he's dead. Let's go in. Where are the man and the woman who came in here a minute ago? Huh? Dios mio. Come with us. Police, no entry. in a mess now. The library is surely being watched by the police. I'm going up to the terrace. Maybe I can find some trace of my father there. D Diane, wait! Diane, I thought you were already on the terrace. Well, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. First, we need to find a way to reach the three ledges in this room. My father often came to work here. How can we reach the terrace? My father told me that certain mechanisms provided access to it. What sort of mechanisms? I don't know. I merely overheard my father one day mention their existence to Jorge, the curator. Diane, I found a secret passage. Follow me. Ryan, what are you staring at? Uh, nothing. Pull yourself together, Ryan. Have you known the curator for some time? Since I first arrived in Buenos Aires three years ago. You've never been up on the terrace? No, unfortunately. Come on, Diane. Forgive me, Diane, but it, it seems to me that... Diane, let's stop wasting time. There's a stairway. The 
door's open. Come on, Diane. We may be able to find your father's trail. That's strange. I once saw snapshots of these three statues on my father's desk. Ryan, what are you doing? Diane, take a look at this. There's something strange about this statue. We need to take a closer look. It's not the uh, original uh, disc. Could this be the one your father is suspected of stealing? Throw it to me! Ryan! Wunderbar! <laughs> Congratulations on all your acrobatics, my good friend. I knew you were no ordinary tourist. I've had you followed since your arrival in Buenos Aires. Unfortunately, my assistant Hunt was not sufficiently cautious. Now, if you would be kind enough to hand over the solar disc to my collaborator. Schloss Adler Base, 17th of January, 1937. Cell wall. Must talk. Important. Listen to me carefully before they come back. In May 1910, I arrived at the small village of Ilsworth to write a science article. There, I discovered an evil cult that was plotting the return to Earth of the Great Old Ones. Halley's Comet was soon due to light up the heavens. The Great Old Ones would cross the thresholds of time and subjugate the human race. In return, the sorcerer Narakamus and his faithful would become immortal. A few minutes before the comet arrived, I managed to eradicate this evil cult. you are an orphan, and that you owe your name to the metal plate you were wearing at the time you were found. Ah, Yan was engraved on it, yeah? Are you saying you are going to write and sign a message which I shall send to Washington? You will tell your superiors that your investigation is proceeding and that they need not worry. Thus, 
you would avoid any further suffering for your companions. The young woman will not be out for much longer. Ten minutes! I will be back in ten minutes! Was Jung Fjord Dietrich is slowly losing his senses? Shut up! He's probably got microphones everywhere. The prisoners have been taken to the laboratory. Obersturmführer Dietrich is preparing a new experiment. You are required. Schnell! Soon, Narakamus will reveal to me that 
which must not be known. God! Yeah! Obersturm Führer, bring me von Ebernock. My hordes must know the invincible power that is now mine. The place of the lords will soon rule over this us. I have seen the future. The great old ones are at the gates of time. They are waiting for a great man. Please, to this earth. Once the stone that protects the Necronomicon is mine, and the evil book belongs to me. I shall be that man! So, Miss Murray, what final message would you like to send to Edward's base before you die? You have become mad, Dietrich. I pity you, you barbarian! Get out! I do not need you anymore. Ultimate man will replace you. Yell! Nama, Utah, Cthulhu! Well, miserable creatures, savers of humanity have left to live. Shlosadla, we be. Your grave! Los Adler Base, 17th of January, 2037. My name is Howard Phillips Parker, and this is the story of the end of humanity. In 1937, my father John Parker escaped from the Schloss Adler polar base, thanks to the mysterious intervention of a certain Ryan. No one believed his story of the Prisoners of Ice. He married, and I was born just before the world plunged into chaos. It was then that my father decided to impart all his knowledge to me. I became a specialist in the myth of Cthulhu, and I inherited a magical stone capable of invoking the Necronomicon. In 1989, following total chaos, I headed a group of survivors and entered the ruins of Schloss Adler, hoping to find the secret of the Prisoners of Ice. I invented a weapon capable of coming to grips with the monsters. The Freeze and Destroy. But there were too many of the creatures. So I made copies of the solar disk my father had found, and dispatched my son Jan into the past, accompanied by Lieutenant Shelfer. I had placed a steel plate with my son's name on it around his neck. Parker Jan. A prisoner of ice attacked Jan and Shelton during the transfer but he only succeeded in getting away with a piece of Jan's plate. If anyone sees this message, then my son Jan has arrived safe and sound in London with Shelfton, and humanity can still be saved.
I found the means of saving you. This solar gateway is used for traveling through time and space. By crossing, you will find yourself teleporting. Safe and sound to a British base. Trust me. Brian, come with us! Idrith and Narakamos have left to Ilsmith to celebrate the rite that will bring the great old ones back to Earth. We must find them! No, Brian, come with us! I can't. Your father's right. Beware of the paradoxes of time. Diane told me what happened inside the office of the library curator. Unfortunately, dear sir, it was stolen from us yesterday. Verdammt! No funny business. Sit disc. Senor, this office is not open to the public. Where is the solar disc? I am not in the mood for jokes here, doctor. As you can see. I see nothing, dear sir. I am blind. There are strange eons where even death may be. Hillsmooth, the Hall of the Sorcerer, Narakamus, 18th of January, 1937. Cthulhu shall return, and a race of war shall rule over mankind. The stone circle can only be destroyed if it is sent back into the abyss of time together with the solar beast. To repose Cthulhu, it would then be necessary to entice the man with the metal mask into the force field. Dietrich knew you were stubborn. He thought I might find you here. You kept your cards close to your chest since the very beginning, sirs. Unfortunately, the game is over for you, Jan. How 
ironical. Your father placed all his hopes in you to save humanity. And I am your father's best friend. An elegant repartee for an amateur! John Parker is your grandfather, but he does not know it. That is truly typical of the son of Howard Parker. It is too late. Dietrich and Narakamus are already celebrating the ceremony that will bring Cthulhu back to Earth. Pray to your god one last time, Jan. I changed identity 16 years ago. I was Lieutenant Shelfton, dispatched with you into the past by your father. This journey through time has made me realize the power of the Great Old Ones. In London, I abandoned you in the care of a charitable institution, the Brothers of the New World. And I devoted myself to worshipping the Great Old Ones. Dietrich contacted me in 1925. and introduced me to a secret society initiated to Cthulian rites. One of the members was a spiritualist with amazing powers. This spiritualist, capable of swaying the masses, became a puppet in the hands of the sect. His mission was merely the first stage in a monstrous plan. Establishing total chaos and preparing the return to Earth of the Great Old Ones. I shall do what I should have done 30 years ago on my arrival in London. against this intruder! Space, 20th of January, 1937. Ryan, thank God you're safe! How did you manage to return to our world, my boy? I have a lot to tell you, Grandfather. A lot. For there are strange eons where even death can die. 
the Armadas lived in peace at Tewanaco. Until the day the fair-haired man appeared. He overthrew the king of the Aymaras and became the god of gods. <laughs> Thus what had previously been would return yet again. <laughs>